there folks! I'm Molly Lambeau back if you don't know me. And I was born February 25th, 1920 on Lulu Island, British Columbia. That's like a small island outside of Vancouver. And I remember when I was a kid, my father would bring all his artist friends around home because he was an art critic. And that's when I met A.Y. Jackson, or Uncle Alex as I like to call him. And he was a painter because I didn't say, but I'm a painter too. And I know for sure that he had something to do with me wanting to be a painter as a little girl. And so I went to the Vancouver School of Art, but of course the war had started by the time I graduated in 1941. And so in 1942, I signed myself up to be a quack, meaning I signed myself up for the Canadian Women's Army Corps. Now I remember the day I signed up, I did my medical, and I signed all the papers, and my mother was waiting for me outside. And so I decided to get out to the November air as quick as I could, but to my horror, I discovered that I needed a pass to be allowed outside and that I couldn't be allowed out past 11 p.m. That was the most shocking thing of all to me. I wonder what I had done. So of course, I hated it for the first few days, but afterwards, you couldn't get me out of the army. I was so happy there. See, the whole structure of army life is agreeable for a painter, because everywhere you turn, there's something terrific to paint. No, I had a really good war, really, because I got to travel a lot. I never stopped drawing. And by the end of the war in 1945, I had the opportunity to travel to all sorts of places in Europe and paint the aftermath scenes I saw of the war because I was named the first Canadian female war artist to be appointed by the government back then. Yeah, I had my own car and I had my own driver and to this day those were six of the most exciting weeks of my life. Now I met my husband Bruno Bobak in 1945 when we were sharing a studio together in London. We had a good time, so we went back to Toronto and married. And it was in 1960, when we were living in Europe, when Bruno got asked to come down to New Brunswick to fulfill a one-year position as artist-in-residence at the University of New Brunswick, here in Fredericton. And so we came. And I remember the first thing I noticed about New Brunswick was the spire of the Wilmot United Church, because on top of it was this great big hand with one finger pointing to heaven. And I thought that was so interesting, I just knew we were going to love it here. And we did, because by Christmas time of that year, Bruno and I were so enthusiastic and established in New Brunswick. We hoped we never had to leave. And luckily we didn't, because Colin McKay said that Bruno could run the art center of the university, and that we could have a studio on campus as well. So we permanently settled here in Fredericton in around 1962. And I started teaching him as immediately after we got here. Now, my mother used to tell me stories about New Brunswick because she was here in her youth. And so she would tell me stories like how they would go on a sleigh ride from Oromukto to Fredericton on the frozen St. John River, and the only way they could keep warm was that they held two hot potatoes in their hands. And I always wondered, is that where the game hot potato came from? Something to think about for sure. But she would also sell vegetables outside of City Hall, and they would go to Barker House afterwards and have a great big dinner on the proceeds. And gosh, she loved New Brunswick, and she passed her love down to me. We also met John Corey when we came to Fredericton, and he was a fellow artist and friend. And he taught us how to love the winter here. He would take us to the countryside in his old car, and we would lay a bear rug down on the snow and have a picnic under the pure blue sky. And he taught us about mushrooms and fish and apples and things the supermarkets didn't supply. And of course, Fredericton had a farmer's market here too. It used to just be a market, but then it kind of became a statement against supermarkets and plastic packaging. And it was a place of gentle protest, a place where you could enjoy the simple life that was now gone. Well, maybe it was a place to pretend, but I loved it. And I would go there every Saturday morning to get fresh eggs or, or flowers. And that's something I love about New Brunswick, is it's full of wild, hardy flowers. See, after living in Fredericton for so long, I have my places of finding and looking for these flowers. And it just reminds me that Fredericton is on an intimate scale that one can contain. See, I love making watercolors of flowers because they remind me so much of us, each unique in their own way. Nowadays, I travel around the province and teach some art classes now and then, and I get commissioned to paint official events here at the Ledge and at City Hall. And just recently, I had the opportunity to paint the Queen's visit of New Brunswick in 1976, and I actually got to exhibit all 50 of those paintings across the street at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery in 1977. That was the most satisfying evening for me as a painter because everyone came to see it, from the premiere to the girl who cuts my hair. Now, thank you for spending your time with me today. I just want to say, be careful out on that ice.